In today's video, we're going to be using some power tools to build a wattled trellis out of fence board. I'm by no means a uh, woodworker or carpenter by trade, so everything I do is just based out of what I know. So there's probably going to be a lot of errors, and if there are any safety issues for the pros and uh, carpenters, sorry for uh, all of those. So um, really important for me to mention that this is made for mostly entertainment purposes and to, if you're going to be using power tools, follow safety uh, guidelines in the manual and also use safety equipment like ear protection and eye protection. So um, without further ado, I hope you enjoy this episode on making a wattled trellis out of fence board. Hello everyone. These fence boards are quickly becoming one of my favorite resources for use in the garden. We've used fence board to make a planter and also as a backsplash for our pond. Once we have our greenhouse up and going, we're planning to use the fence board once again to build benches and perhaps shelving for inside the greenhouse. Today we'll be using the, uh, this material to make a trellis for our, our tomatoes in the back. So we'll use a table saw, we'll rip out uh, strips and make some dado cuts and hopefully we can borrow the waddling technique that we use for the trellis that's on the opposite side over here and um, avoid the use of wood glue. So hopefully it works. This is all conceptual. Uh, hopefully there are lots of success today and few failures, but I guess we'll find out together soon. The plan is to have our trellis go up to about 44 inches and we're going to need eight verticals that are about a foot apart. With the boards we've marked out 44 inches from the notched end and just to maximize our material we'll, we'll rip the verticals at one and a half inches and we'll use this notch as a way We'll also use this notch um, portion. It'll end up being a nice spike for us to drive our material. So with this board, we can rip three pieces. So what we're going to do is we're going to start ripping on this side, and then on this side, and then um, on this side. Because then what happens is we'll get a little tiny strip that's nice and straight and even. And maybe we can use it somewhere else in the future. Here's a quick tip, because of the kerf of the blade, you're going to want to cut your boards all in the same direction. If you face it this way, to cut one of the boards, you're going to be off by the kerf of the blade, which is the thickness of the blade. So make sure you always cut in the same direction. Uh, it starts off by marking on, on the correct side as well too. We're going to set up our table saw to rip out three quarter inch strips from these four foot long boards and these are going to run horizontal. I guess um, with the way the table set up, 
the thinnest we can rip is one inch, and I guess uh, I guess I'll be okay. I don't want to do too thin. It's going to get a little bit more dangerous, and uh, since I'm not an experienced woodworker, I want to mitigate risks. Okay, next we're going to set up our table saw for dado cuts. Those are basically cutting sl slots into our wood. Take this off. Take this off. It would be easier if I raised this, huh? Here's our Dao blades, D-A-D-O. I'm kicking myself because I'm doing a dry fit and I didn't do alternating dado cuts on these vertical ones. So I guess I'm glad I caught the error of my ways because I plan to also dado cut the horizontals. So um, those are going to be eight of them. So I guess we'll have to go back to this table saw and alternate cut these, these dado. So here are our vertical pieces and we were lucky and caught our error and just needed to cut dados on uh, just one side of all the eight pieces because what we ended up doing was we were able to alternate the, the verticals. Um, so there was less cutting than imagined but that was a little bit demoralizing and we're gonna go and now cut the dados in the horizontal and once again, it was good that we dry fit and caught that error because now we know not to do it for the horizontals.
Okay, here comes the fun part after playing with the table saw is to waddle our trellis together and hopefully it works out. Otherwise, we'll have to use wood glue. Hopefully it works out. You have to forgive the lighting. So um, here we go. Let's see here. Uh. working so far the uh, moment of truth will be when we get more pieces in because the more you get in the more tension there is and it gets a little bit more difficult so there's our first piece it looks like it's staying in place so really quickly, we cut our horizontal pieces in alternating um, notches or deos. And so we're going to wato these in our trellis here. Okay. Tomorrow? Yeah. And no TV. We gotta go sleep. You gotta take a nap, yeah. Yeah. I said, Mama. I was said, take a nap, take a nap. Mm hmm. Said it. She said to take a nap? Well, you should take a nap. Looking good. Hopefully I didn't jinx it. Oop, we're hearing cracking. Success, mostly. So it took a little bit longer than planned for this uh, wattled trellis made out of fence board to be completed. I'll take you in for a closer look to show you some of the pitfalls in case you're looking to build one for yourself out of fence board. So until next time, thank you for watching and I'll see you then. For the project, we use one, two, three, four, five, five pieces of fence board and they were on sale for two dollars and 45 cents a piece we still have leftover material to make planter boxes from out of them so um, five times 245 uh, whatever that is roughly 15 dollars to make our trellis plus our time effort and of course uh, our investment in some
power tools. So that's also part of the equation if, if you're going to go um, are concerned about the cost. Um, I wanted to do copper. That would last longer, but the materials for copper was going to end up to be more than $130 to do. Uh, copper pipe, that is. And uh, in addition, the T um, uh, joins, they only have T joins, so if you're going to make a copper trellis, you don't have this, this uh, I forget what it's called, um, the cross join piece. Those are really expensive and really hard to find, and if you get that, you're, you're looking at probably three, four hundred dollars. So a lot of people with copper pipe, they um, go about using just the T join and find creative ways to make a trellis out of it. So um, yeah, the other consideration, consideration was copper. All right, let me take you in for a closer look for those interested in making their own and some of the pitfalls. Just remember to do when um, alternating day cuts for the um, horizontals and the um, verticals. One of the unknowns about the project is how deep of a day cut to make. I was concerned about making too deep of one where there's not enough tension to hold the trellis together. So I erred on side caution and made it um, just a little bit on on the verticals and a little bit more on the horizontals. But as I was installing it, I noticed that there was a lot of tension. Um, so we could have cut in deep a little bit more. Um, so start, some of the pieces started to buckle and crack, but it looks like there is enough tension and this elasticity in the wood that it will hold together. So we'll, we'll um, find out in, in due time. The other thing is that right now the wood color looks really nice and over time um, it may get a little bit uh, dull in color and we didn't put any stain on there. So keep that in mind if, if you're um, wanting to think about this long term, maybe uh, up to five years, uh, maybe to stain it or something. But uh, yeah, all in all, happy with this. We're gonna allow our pole tomatoes to grow on here. And um, at some point I may put some, some um, hooks here or just maybe um, just tie string here. And we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna tie the string onto the eaves and let the tomatoes climb that way. So that was the other consideration was the height of this. I want, I wanted it high enough so that when we run the string over, it, the angle of the string is still uh, um, such that we can walk underneath. So, um, and if you're interested in how the tomatoes are looking, that's how they are as of today. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoyed. So on this channel, I like to show a little some off topic stuff at the end of episodes if possible. And the tiger fig has always been a popular um, plant for many viewers. So I thought I'd show you guys what the tiger fig is doing. It's making fruit and um, there's already stripes on some of them. So they're coming along and maybe we'll um, cover them this year so that we can have a taste instead of letting the birds have it all.